to Scholastic Esports 101. This is a series of videos where we teach new coaches or maybe uh, coaches that have been coaching for a while um, some different skills that they'll need to be successful Scholastic Esports coaches. So my name is Coach Renee, Mike Renee, and I'm the Esports coach at Noble Academy in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, noblenights.gg is our website to learn more about us. And today in this video, we're going to look at esports terms every coach should know. So you're going to hear your players often use certain vernacular and vocabulary, and it's good to know what those words mean, um, and also so you can use them with your players as well. It just gives more buy-in, uh, and your your team your team and your players will feel more part of uh, a cohesive unit if everyone's kind of using the same language. So I think I have about 30 terms here. We'll go through them fairly quickly, um, but of course you can always come back to this video if you need to review some of the terms. So let's get started. There'll be an alphabetical order here roughly. So the first one is BM, or that means bad manners. Someone who is being rude and disrespectful. So you'll hear students say this sometimes or players say this. They'll often, often put it in chat as well. So they might type just BM if somebody is being rude or disrespectful. Obviously as a Scholastic Esports coach, you don't want your players doing that. And this is one of those, uh, when we talk about the benefits of Scholastic Esports, this is one of those opportunities to step in as a coach and nip that in the bud, right? Tell players that that's on acceptable, right? That they're representing not only themselves, but their school when they're playing Scholastic Esports on a team. Um, and so we want to avoid that as much as possible. But if you've spent any time playing uh, gaming online, uh, in particular, you'll know that you, BM can be rampant, right? Especially in certain titles. So again, that's something as coaches we want to really address with our students and, and get it stopped uh, really, really soon in our, uh, you know, in our, in our matches or even just in the life of your team. Uh, second term is bugs. Errors in computer code, a program, or a video game, right? So if you're a computer person you, or a computer programmer done some development, you've probably heard this term before. Basically just means that the developer generally accidentally made a bug, right? Made a mistake and it causes some type of uh, uh, error or program or crash to, to, to go wrong. So students, players will say, oh, this, this, this game has a bug in it, right? And sometimes even in games, students and players will find ways to exploit bugs to get an advantage, right? And just as a side note, you should look up where that term come from, look up, uh, came from, sorry. Look up uh, somebody named Dr. Grace Ho uh, Hopper. Uh, really interesting where the term computer bug came from. Uh, third term is buff. Any change to a game that makes a character or, st or strategy stronger. So you all hear players say, oh, they just added a new buff to the game. That basically means a character, when the, when the developers, they're always, especially in esports titles, they're always making changes to try to make the, the game a little more fair and a little more balanced. And so you'll hear players say, oh, they got a buff. This player got a buff. Um, and that means that just something to make the player or the strategy they're using better. Um, the opposite of that is a nerf. And we'll see what that uh, what that means when we get to that, uh, that term here coming up. All right, another term is build. A player choosing the skills, abilities, or loadout of their character. How a player chooses to make their character, right? So basically you'll hear players say, I'm going to run this build or I'm going to run that build. Sometimes it's also called a comp um, and you'll see that term here. It's also on the screen, but it basically kind of means the same thing. Um, so basically in esports, part of the strategy, right, again, is when you're thinking about strategies, what kind of build are, are your players going to use? What kind of comp are they going to use? Um, and so that's important. That's a big part of the strategies and, and hopefully your students and you as your as the coach will kind of talk to your students and players about what kind of build and comp they think will be best for this particular team that you're playing or this particular title or maybe the developers just added a buff to the game or a nerf and, uh, and you need a new build or a new loadout or a new comp to, uh, to, to be competitive. Another term is carry. Uh, carry means a player that uh, carries their team when they're much better than their teammates. And you'll see this a lot in K-12 uh, Scholastic Esports, even in Collegiate Esports, um, where you have certain players that are just way, way better than others. Um, it happens all the time. It's just natural. Some students have played these titles, these games a lot longer than others. And hopefully you're getting brand new students to your team and maybe somebody that's always wanted to play esports but didn't really have a team to play on, right? So you're going to have um, one player carry, or sometimes a couple players, players carry a whole team and that just means when you have one player or a couple players that are way better than everybody else. Um, 
it doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative thing, but it could be, right? You could have a player that is trying to carry all the time and maybe they think they're better than everybody, but they're really not. So again, as a coach, that's something you really have to be mindful of and making sure that, okay, sometimes you might need a player to carry the team. I mean, because ultimately in esports, we want to win, right? We want our team to be successful. Uh, and there's lots of ways to be successful, but winning is certainly one of those. Um, and so you might want a player to carry, but just being mindful of that and talking to your players about that. But you, you might hear, uh, hear your players say that. Again, comp is similar to a build. It stands for composition, I think. Uh, but students and players just say comp. Uh, the makeup of a team that character the, where the characters fill roles. So one title that we play here at Noble is Overwatch. And so you'll Overwatch 2 and you'll hear a player say a comp. And so you'll have uh, what kind of composition, what kind of loadout do you want for your player? So what kind of tank, what kind of DPS, what kind of support? And we'll get to what those terms mean in a little bit. Okay. All right, next, crossplay. This one might be familiar to you um, in esports. This is something huge in K-12 esports in particular. Basically just different gaming environments. So are your players playing on PC? Are they playing on Xbox? Are they playing on PlayStation? Are they playing on Switch? Are they playing on a combination of all those? Uh, some titles you can actually play on mobile as well, an iPad or, or a phone that gets a little trickier, but technically there are some titles you can do that. Uh, excuse me. So uh, you'll hear students say this game has crossplay, right? And generally, you want to pick titles, especially at a K-12 esports environment, that do have crossplay, because you might have some students that have gaming PCs at home, or your school might be lucky enough to have PCs where you can play these titles on. Other students might only have an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Switch, and so having games that are crossplay is really important. That way, everybody can play. If the title just works on an Xbox or just works on a PC then obviously you're going to limit the amount of players just by definition how many players can play and you know we don't we want to try to be as inclusive as possible right another term is dps stands for damage per second so that's a character or a calculation of how much damage happens over a set amount of time so again using the overwatch 2 analogy or example we play overwatch 2 the objective there is to uh, there's several objectives but basically you want to take your play, the other team out you want to eliminate them as fast as possible so you you want characters that can do a high DPS, a damage per second, because the more damage you do, the more likely that those characters are going to get knocked out and your team is going to be successful, right? So you'll hear students say DPS or damage per second. DLC stands for downloadable content. This is just extra content that is added to game, uh, to the game. A lot of our titles that we play in esports are free to play, and we'll get to what that means in a little bit. But sometimes they'll have DLC, downloadable contact content, and that's basically just adding extra features to the game that you have to download, right? And that could be on PC, uh, could be any, any of the crossplay titles. So PC, Xbox, PlayStation, any of those, right? So DLC. Next, free to play, F2, uh, F2P. I don't think very many people say F2P. It's kind of hard to say, but free to play just means a game is free to play, right? Often these games have microtransactions and that's how the companies make money. So probably the most famous example of this type of game, I mean, there's hundreds, right? But Fortnite, uh, became very successful because it was a free-to-play game. You can literally play Fortnite absolutely free. You need a computer or a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Switch, but once you have the gaming device, the game is 100% free to play. Now, obviously, if you want to add features to the game or um, not even features, but just different um, experiences to the game, skins, um, you have to pay money, right? And those are what are called microtransactions. But typically in esports, we want free to play games because it just makes that barrier entry to entry a lot easier. Uh, GG, that means good game. You'll see that a lot, right? So GG, that's something you want, always want your players to be doing um, at the end of a game. Um, say GG, good game, just means, you know, it's kind of like if you play um, traditional sports where the players, you know, uh, shake hands at the end of a, of a game. Same idea, right? Uh, it is considered poor sportsmanship if the winning team does that first. And you will see this happen. And again, as a coach, you want to make, you want to stop this right away. If you're winning really, um, you know, by a lot, if you're really dominating a team and your players start saying GG before the game's even over, that's considered rude, right? You only say it at the very, very end of the game or if you're the losing team and you know you're going to lose it's acceptable for the losing team to say gg this is over right but the, it's not acceptable for the winning team to be doing that until the game is actually over otherwise that's considered bm or bad manners 
A GLHF is similar, but that's at the beginning of the game. So good luck, high five. So again, it's kind of like a handshake at the beginning of a game. Um, you shake your opponent's hand to say, you know, good luck, high five, right? So you'll see players, again, GG and GLHF aren't usually said out loud. They're, they're said in chat or in Discord. Uh, and that just means, hey, have fun, good luck, high five. Griefing, similar to what we talked about with BM. Uh, purposeful harassment of one player by another. This happens a lot in video gaming. Um, and again, as a Scholastic Esports coach, this is your job to prevent this from happening. We don't want students to feel uncomfortable or harassed just like in real life and certainly in, in, in a virtual environment, in a gaming environment, we don't want that either. So griefing is a bad thing and you need to do everything in your power as a coach to stop that. Um, a healer is a character whose main job is to heal their teammates. So um, again, when you're picking your loadout or your build or your comp, you're going to need some healer characters often. And that person generally stays in the back of the group, not always, sometimes above, you know, because we're in 3D environments here. And their main purpose is to heal or buff uh, um, other characters. So buff means make them better, right? So a healer will sometimes, in Overwatch, you can have a character, the kind of the most famous one uh, a lot of players play, and I play actually, is Mercy. And she can heal and buff uh, your DPS and your tank characters. So a healer is an important role in a game because if your players are dying, if they're getting eliminated, obviously you're probably not going to win. So a healer is going to try to do everything they can to prevent that from happening. Um, so that's kind of a, it's called often called a support role as well. Um, meta, meta just be, basically means the best way to play a game. So when your students, you'll hear students say, what's the current meta? That means when a, when a game comes out or when a company buffs it or nerfs a game, they're gonna, it'll change the meta, which basically means what's the, what are the best strategies to win? What kind of builds, what kind of comps, what kind of loadouts do you need to, to survive the meta, to do the best in the meta? So students will say that, players will say that all the time. What's the current meta? Right? And as a coach, you kind of need to know that. You need to know what the current meta is in each of the titles you're competing in so you can help students develop strategies to be successful in, in whatever the meta is. And the meta, meta will change a lot for each title because, again, esports companies uh, or developers, I should say, uh, of the titles are constantly making changes to their games to make them more exciting, to make them more interesting, and obviously at the end of the day to, to get more people to uh, buy their game. All right, let's look at another term here. We have nerf. So I've said this term several times already before, but a nerf is any change to a game that makes a character or strategy uh, weaker. So I, I think it comes from actually the, the, where it comes from is nerf, like, you know, nerf guns and, you know, nerf toys and that type of thing. So I'm not sure really what the connection is, but anyway, a nerf is any change that makes something uh, weaker. So again, back to build outs and comps and meta, if the developer of a game nerfs something, then your comp or your build out in the meta might change. Not necessarily, but that's what this, that's what your players are going to be doing. And you, as a coach, is to help them, you know, help them figure out. Okay, there was a nerf to the game last week, so we might need a different meta, or we might need a different build out or a comp, or the meta has changed. Right? Uh, NPC is a non-player character, so it's basically a character not controlled by a real pe person. So. Some titles have these. Esports titles generally don't have a lot of these, but sometimes you'll see them. Um, they're used more in like single player games and RTS, real time strategy games and that type of thing. But an NPC stands for a non-player character. It's basically a character in a video game that's not controlled by a real person. Um, CCGs, or sometimes they're called OCCGs, online collectible card games. A CCG is a collectible card game, and sometimes you'll hear the O in front of it to make to, to signify that it's digital or online. Um, three of the most popular of these titles are Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, believe it or not, there are competitions, uh, esports competitions in, in these. No, I'm not sure Yu-Gi-Oh, but Pokemon, uh, Magic the Gathering, and Hearthstone is another big one that's uh, digital only. And these are basically card games that have a tremendous amount of strategy, um, but they're not you know, first person shooters or anything like that. It's basically just you're playing cards and you're trying to uh, uh, you know, use a strategy to defeat your opponent various ways. So they're actually a great titles, especially for younger players. Pokemon, you know, lots of younger players play that game, the, the, the tradable card game version of you know, where you can buy the physical cards, but there's also a digital version, a digital, digital version of it as well that's completely free to play, um, which is great. So if you're looking, especially for younger 
students if you're looking for some titles. I think Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh are more designed for upper middle school and high school, but Pokemon, uh, Hearthstone I think is 13 plus as well, but Pokemon certainly could be a great title that you could get uh, younger students involved in as an online CCG. All right, some more terms here. OP just means overpowered. So anything considered so powerful that it's unfair or broken. So again, you'll hear players often say, oh, that character's OP or that strategy's OP. It means overpowered. It means if you play that strategy, you might have a good chance of winning. Now, not necessarily because maybe everybody else is playing the OP characters as well, right? So if everybody's playing them, then it could be more of a fair meta, right? But OP means overpowered. Uh, PTW, again, I don't think anyone ever says it that way, but uh, that means pay to win. So games that are considered um, that you basically have to pay them to win. And some developers uh, will make games purposely PTW or pay to win. So they're free to play to get started. But if you really want to be competitive, if you really want to win, you have to pay real money. And so typically we want to stay away from those games in K-12 esports or really any esports at all. Um, honestly, some of the uh, online collectible card games games i would argue magic the gathering the online version of it is a pay to win game where the more money you pay the better cards you're going to get and therefore the better chance of winning you are so again you kind of want to stay you have to be mindful and um, be knowledgeable about what games are considered pay to win um, and that changes all the time so it's just one of those things you kind of have to you know uh, do your research and kind of figure out where 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 the meta is on some of these games uh, pvp means player versus player. So again, typically these are the type of games we play in Scholastic Esports because you're playing real people. You're playing against other people. Um, you can play games that have NPCs, but typically, you know, to get the most out of Scholastic Esports, I would argue that it's you should be playing PvP the games, player versus player. So that just means when humans are playing against other humans, not NPCs. Uh, a few more here. Rage quit to become so angry that you quit in the middle of the game. This happens. Students get so frustrated. We're all human beings after all. Um, and sometimes you get so frustrated that you just quit in the middle of the game. Again, as a coach, you want to try to not have your players do that because that's considered BM, bad manners. Um, but, you, you know, you'll hear and see sometimes students will rage quit. That means they just quit in the middle of the game because um, they're getting defeated so badly and they just give up, basically. Similarly, a, a term that's similar to that is called salty. That player's being salty basically just means a sore loser, a bad loser, right? They're getting, uh, you know, they're getting b badly defeated and so they get salty. They're just a sore loser and they might start exhibiting BM or griefing in chat um, and the players will say, oh, they're just being salty. Shoutcasting means broadcasting esports events. So lots of uh, teams uh, live broadcast their esports matches, either on Twitch or YouTube. Those are kind of the two platforms, but there's some others. Um, here at Noble, we use Twitch, and so we try to stream, or, or sometimes you'll hear it called streaming as well. Shoutcasting, I think that term came into effect because you'll, if you ever watch like Twitch and some professional esports, uh, the announcers literally shout and they get very excited, right? So the idea is that uh, players can get really into the game and that's a whole nother side of Scholastic Esports that you might want to look to add to your team is not only do you have players but you could have uh, students broadcasting or shoutcasting the matches uh, to build excitement for the school to build team spirit that type of thing and so uh, again sometimes it's called streaming uh, but the other term is shoutcasting. All right support. A support is a character whose main role is to heal or buff so again in some titles like Overwatch 2, you're going to have a variety of characters, a variety of comps, compositions, and so one character might be a support character, and their main job is to heal or buff the other players. Uh, tank, uh, again, similar, uh, but a, kind of the opposite of a support player. Usually a tank player is in the front, so think of like an army tank, right? So the tanks are usually in the front. They deal damage, but they also block a lot of damage. So a tank player tends to be a more uh, powerful character, a bigger character generally. They're out in front and they're blocking and dealing damage, very similar to a tank on a battlefield. A tilt is a player who begins playing poorly out of anger or frustration. So again, this is similar to BM, griefing, all those other terms. You'll see somebody, uh, you might hear a player say, oh, they're getting salty, they're starting to tilt. Tilt means they're purposely playing bad because maybe they're carrying their team and, all, and then, the, but the team is losing. So they start getting, they start tilting, right? It just means they start playing bad because either on purpose, usually it's on purpose, but sometimes it's just out of frustration too. Uh, because they're losing. So a player who's, you know, just purposely playing poorly, um, 
you know, sometimes players just play poor, poorly, not on purpose, right? But they just, you know, they're having a bad day or whatever, and things aren't working the way they thought. So typically tilt means they're playing poorly on purpose. All right, last ones here, toxic, poor behavior and negative attitudes. So you're gonna notice a lot of negative terms in this and, the, in the, and that's important. Again, as a coach, you're aware of these things. Um, again, we wanna avoid toxicity. We don't want our players to be toxic. Um, we're trying to encourage positive behavior in our esports programs. That's one of the advantages of Scholastic Esports is teaching kids how to be respectful in, in not only in person, but also in, in digital online environments. So, you know, being toxic is considered a, a bad thing, right? Having poor behavior and a negative attitude. Again, another negative term, trolling, purposeful harassment of one player by another. So certainly you don't want your players trolling other players. That's considered negative and you don't, as a coach, you want to make sure that you stop that right away. Um, and then finally, video on demand, which means replays of matches that can be re reviewed and analyzed. So maybe you, you record your streams or you just record your players playing. Um, and then you can review those as a VOD, a video on demand. And you put those on your YouTube channel or maybe you don't want to put them up publicly so you just keep the videos on a computer at school or something and, and your students can watch those in some of your, during your practices. You can, you can review your strategy and review how you played. Okay, so those were 30 terms. There are, believe it or not, hundreds of more probably, but those are just kind of 30 that I picked. Hopefully those were helpful for you. Um, you know, and you can go back through the video if you need, but these are just some of the things as a scholastic esports coach, um, knowing these terms will help you uh, be a better coach and just be, you know, be able to use the language that your players are using. Hope that was helpful. All right, stay tuned for the next one. Take care. This is Coach Renee, bye-bye.